Hello and welcome to First Look. I'm Young John, and today we're going to look at the Asus Tough Dash F15 gaming laptop, the 2022 model. Now this is loads different from last year's model, uh, 2021, so you got to be sure that you're looking at the right thing. Just a note, this video will not be about benchmarking tests, so if you're looking for those, this video isn't it. I gotta say, this machine is one of the best value for money uh, in a gaming laptop for under $1,000 before taxes. Not $1,200, not $1,100, under $1,000. Now to see why this is so, uh, let's start with an unboxing first. So this is the front of the box. It's a plain brown box uh, with the simple tough gaming and a logo right in the center. It's almost like a carry briefcase. It's got a handle right on the top here. And it's got a security sticker on the top left back. We'll take our trusty knife. No one's tampered with it. Great. And you open it like this. You can stick your finger into this slot here and lift out your laptop, which is protected by like a Tivex sleeve. Oh, beautiful. And here's the laptop. User guide, warranty card, and a thank you letter. And underneath, wow, a big ass power brick and a power cord. And that's what you get in the box. Your laptop, power brick and cable, and your paperwork. The laptop is really beautiful. For a gaming laptop, it's quite small and thin actually. Uh, the top is made of metal. It has the tough logo on the upper uh, right hand corner up there. Here is the bottom of the laptop. This is mostly made out of plastic. It has rubber feet in all of the major corners. So when you put it down, it doesn't move anywhere. It's really, really solid. One negative aspect of this design is the bad airflow. It's being blocked by these bits here. So there's like five holes for hair. One, two, three, four, and five, where the air can kind of slip in. But if you are on a table like most people, and you put this down, you can hardly see any gaps. So what I end up doing is using a clothespin and I just stick it where the foot is for the possibility of air to get, you know, underneath the laptop. So strike number one, <laughs> bad airflow design. Otherwise the design is quite nice. It's really light. It's under five pounds, it's 4.41 pounds. And for a gaming laptop, that is super light. Now let's open it up. This is the maximum that you can open the lid. This is the angle, it doesn't fold flat. On top, they finally put the uh, webcam back in. You have the microphones right next to them on the left and the right side of it. Last year's model didn't have a webcam. This is a webcam test for the ASUS Tough Dash F15. Uh, this is the uh, quality you can expect. Uh, this is the microphone recording, the built-in microphone, and uh, we'll try to correct white balance when I do this, it might turn bluish or so, and when I go like this, it'll turn back to whatever it is uh, that the white balance software is doing inside there. So uh, not too bad. The screen has very, very thin bezels around the top and the right and the left side. It's really, really thin. It's almost as if they weren't there. You have a chiclet styled keyboard, you have the four gaming keys, WASD in white. The touchpad is super large. Look at this. This is really, really big. I've never seen a pad that big before. The power button is on the upper right hand corner and you have volume down, volume up and mic mute along with armory crate, which calls up the utility for this laptop. The front has nothing, but there is a lip for you to grab and open the lid. From the left, you see the vent, the power in, the Ethernet port, HDMI port, USB-C Thunderbolt port, a USB-C port with display and power, a super speed USB-A port, and a combo headphone mic jack. On the flip side, you have one super speed USB-A port, more venting, and the Kensington lock. Here's the back of the laptop. It would have been great if there were ports on the back instead of on the side, but this is super cool looking. It looks like a race car almost. The one major thing I don't like about this laptop, Asus decided to put all of their I.O. ports on this little sliver of real estate because look how close these 
ports are to each other. Uh, these things are so close together, you might have problems fitting all of your uh, peripherals in. Major change for 2022 is the new Intel 12th generation chip. It's a huge change in architecture because it holds big cores and little cores. It uses the big cores when it does big tasks like gaming or video editing, and it uses the little cores to sip on the energy when it's doing smaller things. Last year, the 11th gen, uh, you can only get four cores. This comes with a discrete video card, the NVIDIA 3060 at 105 watts. Well, now it's December, so you get the same laptop with a 3070 video card at 105 watts. Asus made a nice little compromise. They only gave us 105 watts for the discrete video card, but then on the flip side, it's super light for a, you know, a gaming laptop. And yes, this laptop does come with a MUX switch. It bypasses the CPU and the graphics. Information goes directly to the monitor. This guy here comes with Thunderbolt 4. It only comes with Intel chips and not AMD, which is why I get Intel chips uh, for the fast throughput. If you're a video editor or a photo editor, You'll want, you don't want to sit there waiting for these files to transfer over, like how long is this going to take? Thunderbolt 4 gives you 40 gigabits per second maximum. So if you have the proper cables and the proper drives that can take advantage of Thunderbolt 4, you can transfer these things super fast. This will basically future-proof you for many years to come. Getting on the internet is super quick. This has Wi-Fi 6 or 802.11ax, and it also has Bluetooth 5.2. And if you don't want to use Wi-Fi, you can always use your uh, Ethernet port and connect directly into your router. Let's turn on the laptop. We have the power button up here that we'll press and we'll plug in the power cord. So this is a 200 watt power brick, it's the size of my hand, and actually it's quite thin. So it doesn't really feel like a heavy brick. So you can control almost everything you need using the function keys up here, including the screen brightness or the keyboard LED lights. You can even bring up a calculator by function enter on the right side here, and it'll bring up your uh, little calculator there, which is pretty cool, I like that. We have function F1, which is muting the volume. We have four levels of keyboard brightness. You control the F2 and F3, here's the maximum, and here's three, two, and off. Screen brightness is controlled with F7 and F8. F7 goes down and F8 goes up. Trackpad can be disabled with function F10 or enabled again. And you can go to sleep mode with F11. You can turn on airplane mode, function F12. And the indicator light just went on for the airplane. You can turn it back off and the indicator light will also go off. I've installed OBS Studio on the upper left hand corner, but this is a virgin machine. First, I would Google dbloat windows and get rid of all the programs and telemetry that you don't want. But the other programs installed by ASUS are these three here. The first one is McAfee Personal Security. Get rid of that immediately, it is a resource hog. Uh, Windows security is good enough for almost everything. The other two programs are My ASUS and Armory Crate. Here is my ASUS. Most of these selections on the left are promotions and sales, but uh, the useful part is uh, these three links right over here. Battery, health, Wi-Fi, smart, and task first. You can do that in customizations and uh, select uh, the kind of battery charging. Balanced mode is probably a good place to start. And task first if you want to prioritize your internet uh, connectivity for gaming, multimedia, or productivity or whatnot. And those are the most useful bits of my ASUS. The other program is Armory Crate. This is more specific information on your CPU and GPU usage. So you can see memory and storage up here, fan speed down here, and your laptop's temperature on the left side. The most useful thing of this laptop is your fan speed selection on the bottom along here. Uh, Windows is uh, letting Windows set everything. You can go to silent, which limits the CPU speed, uh, but in return, uh, the fan doesn't have to you know, spin as fast. Performance is a good balance of everything, and Turbo pretty much guarantees that your fan will be running all the time, but also the CPU will be running at top performance. You can use function F5, and you see the little fan there. It cycles through silent, performance, and Turbo. 
uh, without you having to actually go into armory crate. If you wish, you can go to manual and set everything yourself. Here you can set uh, your CPU uh, wattage and over here on the upper left, you can set your GPU wattage, uh, but I would probably stick with one of these guys in, uh, you know, down here, silent performance or turbo. The MUX switch can be turned on and off in Armory Crate, uh, clicking right there. So you tap it there and you need to restart the system for the changes to take effect. I'm gonna click no. Right now it's in MS hybrid mode. It switches dynamically by itself. I think this is connected to the Nvidia settings. So in program settings, a game like Subnautica, the auto select has Nvidia GPU. When you start a program that uses the Nvidia GPU, I think the MUX switch turns on automatically. It's probably the easiest way to use the MUX switch without having to think about it every single time you start a game. The second option on the left is for memory. In GPU power saving, you have a couple of selections for uh, when the GPU is selected in standard, eco mode, and in optimized. You have a couple of lighting settings over here. You have some audio settings if you update it connected to the internet. And you have a resource monitor, which you can record if you're playing a game and want to see you know, how uh, your CPU is being used, how your GPU is being used, and that kind of thing. You have Aura Sync over here, but you need the internet to synchronize devices. You have effects, but you need to connect to the internet. Game visuals are preset selections for color temperature, brightness, and that sort of thing. Here's a game library if you want to organize your games. Here's scenario profiles if you want to use that. Feature stuff for them to sell you stuff. News for them to tell you about new stuff. <laughs> Otherwise, the most important bits are home and device. And that's pretty much it for Armory Crate. I know I said we won't do benchmarks in this video, but... So I've been playing this game a couple of minutes to drive up uh, the CPU and GPU usage. And you can hear the... You can hear... First of all, you can hear the audio. This is only a 10, and it's still pretty loud. So it's not bad, it drives it pretty loud. The quality is okay, more or less. And uh, right now what you're hearing is the fan noise. I'm gonna get really close to uh, where the fan is. And that's the kind of noise you hear. It's acceptable, not too noisy. When I put my hand behind the vents, it is really, really hot. This is like burning, you don't want this on your lap. Because uh, it'll like burn your leg if you have this laptop on your leg. So other than that It seems to be routing the heat out very well. So now I'm going to quit the game and See how we've been doing. Let's stop recording and already you can see like the usage drop and the temperatures drop so over here we have 88 and 80 not bad. Let's import what we recorded we got new game, BPM, and uh, let's move this forward a bit. Ooh, wow. There are some huge... Okay, this is more like it. While playing the game, we'll try to find a peak like there. Let's pause. And here we have a peak. As you can see from this chart, the CPU temperatures reached 95 degrees Celsius, and uh, the air that was venting got really, really hot. The surprise is that the GPU temperature is lower than the CPU temperature. It's consistently like 80 degrees, the GPU, while the CPU can reach as high as 95. I guess that's the trade-off of having a gaming laptop that's so thin and light. You have less space to take care of the cooling, but at the same time, you do have something that's more portable. Here are the innards. The memory is 16 gigabyte DDR5, 4800 megahertz. It's a dual channel, so it's faster if there are two chips in there instead of one. So instead of having one 16 gigabyte chip, it's much faster if you have two eight gigabyte chips. You can have a maximum of 32 gigabytes. Our SSDs are here and also a second slot there. Those are PCIe 4x4 lanes. This is a 76 watt hour battery, a four cell lithium ion. In conclusion, I love this laptop. It gives you so much for the money. For under $1,000, you get a 12th generation energy efficient CPU. You get Thunderbolt 4, which gives you 40 gigabyte per second transfer speeds maximum. Uh, you get a 3060 in my case. Uh, in your case right now, it's 3070 NVIDIA GPU. 
Uh, it's not perfect by all means. If they had done something about the ports instead of smushing them all on one side, like, you know, giving it some space, it would have been better. Uh, the cooling could be designed a bit better. But other than that, a gaming laptop that only weighs 4.41 pounds is this thin and light and gives you this much performance and uh, future proofing. This laptop, I think, is ahead above all of the others. Now, you can definitely feel free to check out the competitors. By now, there should be two or three other manufacturers that give you similar specs at a similar price. However, I have seen a competitor, I think it was the MSI Katana, that gives you a 12700 chip, which gives you four more smaller cores, but they leave out Thunderbolt 4. So in the long run, I think this one gives you more future-proofing than the other one does. So just keep your ears out for what they had to put in and take away because there's no such thing as a free lunch. Thank you so much for watching this video on the ASUS Tough Dash F15 2022 model. For those of you who want to get more specific, this is model number FX. 517Z. Uh, if you want to check out prices, we'll leave Amazon affiliate links down below in the notes. And if you haven't yet, please take a moment now to subscribe to the First Look, Look with Two Zeros YouTube channel. We'll see you all again next time.